Hey everyone, this is Crash Me Twice, and today we continue our Western project. This will be part six. So I already marked up the two plates which go on the bottom of the magnets, and they will carry the steel bar engaging with the magnets. So first I need to drill eight holes in each plate for each of the carriers. And that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to set this up in a mill and I drill out those eight holes. Okay, we're at the mill. I have a one eighth inch bit in here. We're going to drill all those holes out. Alrighty, looking good. Now I'm going to drill the second plate. Okay, that was the second plate now. And now I'm just going to clean this plate up and then we go on the assembly bench and onto the rail blocks. Alright, here at the bench. Now I prepared a, just an extra guide rail I've laying around which I ground it down a little bit to make those blocks run really really smooth. And this is just for mocking up stuff. So we're going to use M3 by 8 stainless steel button head hex and let's see how this fits I guess we should line it first and here we go those rail box come M3 so there's not much to do than just making this plate and mounting it on so what's happening here is the rail block will run like this in the machine in the, in the first term on this side we are attaching our spring system on the bottom and here we're going to make two carriers, just like that. So we're going to make a little distance here between the carrier plate here. The magnets uh, engage with that steel plate or bar. Goes then with it back and forward over the magnet. When a magnet is locked, this thing doesn't move anymore and this will then engage the springs. Well, while it's moving, it's so light to move. Even in the rail here, that the spring will not engage until the magnet is locked. And that's what we want. We want to have normal movement with the cyclic. Back and forward, left and right, pitch and roll. And when it's engaged, we want to have it sitting at that trim position. And this will be the new zero. And then the spring will engage back and forward. When it's unlocked, then nothing will engage because well, the spring will move independent from the motor. With a flat steel bar, this carrier plate. And we're going to make four bars, which will hold that steel plate. Then this part will be mounted like this. Right here, just mock that up quick. Below the magnet. And then our bars will hold that flat steel bar. And then we can move that bar back and forward and we're going to make this somewhat floating so that the magnet can adhere to it but also can get away from it. Steel bar can go in like this and move back and forward if we take a little bit off that bar on the end. So right now, I have to make four equal length 83 millimeter bars. I'm just going to use 6061 aluminum and cut it from that rod. And then we go from there. Okay, we have the vise. I applied a little bit of cutting fluid. I'm not going to use my portable band saw to cut those four bars 
I marked them at about 90. We need 83. We're going to trim the ends square. Alrighty, we cut our four bars. Now we're going to go over to the mill and square them all off to the exact size. All right, here we at the mill. Let's get this started. Worked out great. Now we're going to do the other three. One done, three to go. All right, I marked all the bars to be drilled to mount onto the steel bar carriers or the spring system carrier. I also relieved a little bit on the bar here. You can see that right here. So I'm gonna first, before I can measure anything, I have to mount those onto those plates. And everything is marked. And they're gonna go over to the mill and they're gonna drill this out. Okay, now we're here at the mill. And we're gonna drill the plates first and then the bars. I got everything set up. I have a brand new cobalt drill bit, one eighth inch in here. Let's get that ball rolling. Take the plate out. And one more and then we have the plates done. Alright. See where we at here. Okay, looking good there. Two plates done. All right, and now we do the bars and drill them. Set up the long side first. That should be through them for all of them. All right, that looks good. Let's go to the first hole here. Yep. And these holes get tapped, M4. And the ones in the plates, they get drilled out to 4.1 millimeter and then chamfered. Alrighty, let's tap those bars. I got tapping fluid here, got my tap here, I got a little brush here. Let's get this party started. Alright, number one done. And now I'm gonna do the other three and then we're back at the assembly table. Okay, here we are on the assembly table. I already assembled one and here's one missing now. So let's put that in there. I got on each one two bolts, that's a M410 countersunk, hex, stainless steel, and that's a M416, also countersunk, stainless steel. And here we are. And how this works now is just going to get installed into here, like so. And in here comes the steel bar after we modified that bar. And then it would look something like this here, with a little gap in between. And then this can move back and forth at the magnet. Next thing, so we have to recess this a little more. I mean, it's not recessed yet, it's just the plate here, as you can see. But we're gonna, just above the plate, we're gonna recess it, recess it for the metal plate. So that the metal plate makes contact when the magnet is pulling, and then we're gonna have a little suspension system that's a spring and a bolt to bring that magnet back when the magnet, uh, to bring that uh, metal bar back when the magnet releases, was off. So, and I mean, this is not a lot of space as you can see, and this would take a lot up in compared to that metal bar here. And there would not be enough to do anything with it. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna resist this just a tiny bit, just enough so that this plate here 
is offset enough from the magnet to pass without scratching. And the metal bar, we're gonna recess that metal bar on here so about half width or down to an eighth inch. The width of that bar, so when this bar sits in there, it's actually because only in this portion we're going to recess it so it sits deeper. You will see uh, once I have this machine down that metal bar to the right specification, meaning it has to be a little bit shorter as you can see, about a quarter inch. And I mean, one can even leave it at that, that length, uh, but we need to recess it. And if I cut it first and then recess it, I have less to machine. Still, it's very hard to machine on my mill. Uh, you know, it's just a, a mini mill. And uh, so I have to be very careful. I don't have any cooling solution other than air. So I have to be very careful that my bit does not, or my, my end mill does not burn out or burn up on the bottom and becomes useless because they're not cheap. Uh, so I have to do this very slowly and uh, supply enough uh, cutting fluid and air. So after we have done that, when the metal bar is ready, then we can measure how much of a recess we need in the center, a hole to mount that flat bar here in a floating position and modify that to be usable. I squared up the flat pieces of uh, steel here, the steel bar. I marked them as you can see here. So we'll go right into that carrier. So we're gonna take some material off here exactly in that width, about three millimeter deep. And we're gonna do this here now in the mill. Okay, here we are. I'm wearing my, wearing some gloves here. And that's a solid carbide four fluid end mill. I'm gonna cool it just with uh, compressed air because I don't have any other cooling setup. All right. So I'm doing very shallow passes. It's a $40 end mill, which I do not want to ruin. So, I have a mini mill, so it's not the most powerful machine to get down to that, that depth. Here we go. So we have our carrier for the metal bar all done. One is a little thinner, this one here. Here's the completed one already fully assembled. Now this works is, here's the bar. We have recessed this area here. I made a bushing, a threaded bushing, which is 10 millimeter. This is a 5 millimeter bolt, this way it doesn't wobble. This goes in here, like so. Then I cut off the ends of a spring I had laying around. Bent the top in a little bit, I don't know if you can see this. This goes on over both of those bushings. Then we add a washer. That was a larger fender washer, which I turned down a little bit. And then we have two nuts, which later will be lock nuts. We tighten it up until we just reach the spring. I'm, feel, I'm be feeling a little resistance. And here we are, and if I now press on it, it goes back, so the magnet can pull it, and when it's released, it doesn't scratch along the magnet. I also added, right here, and get some to point at, a bolt which I turned down, just to head a little bit, a nut, and this is threaded throughout, so then I can adjust the presetting how close this bar is to the magnet. We want to have it as close as possible without scratching. Because I hate the scratching noise. And same here. Here I have just one bolt. I, I'm, I kind of took this idea from 
the adjustment bolts on my mill for the gips. So just a bolt and a nut to secure it. I couldn't do it on that carrier because on the bottom because uh, I don't have the room between the motor so I had to use set screws on the bottom which get a little dab of, of uh, Loctite, blue Loctite. On this one here I have it on both with my adjustment screws. On the same system here and you can see clearly the difference in width because I had to make this one here a little thinner up here because otherwise it wouldn't pass by my motors. But that's okay, it's uh, still over a quarter inch so it's very strong and here we are. We have the one for this side which we're gonna install later on and we have then the side for here. And to make, I also make those cutouts here, right here. So that the uh, bar can travel in here. So this morning, I machined out another section here from that brace. Instead of uh, machining down the bolts because it makes it easier to adjust. I figured I can easier get a, a wrench in here. When it's too short, I'm going against the button head here. So I just machined this section out on both sides for the sled to travel in. And now the sled can fully, fully engage into that bracket without getting hindered by the adjustment bolts. I also wired up one magnet, this one here, on which I mounted our assembly for testing. I then adjusted all the bolts, including the spring tension, to make sure that this is all correct. I don't have lock nuts on these ones yet, but I will. So all I need to adjust that is practically an Allen wrench and a standard open end wrench. This whole assembly is mounted with M3 by 6 millimeter button heads. Let's try it out. So we move it forward, backwards, and if you look closely, it's engaged. Nothing is moving anymore. I switch off and it's free because it's pulled by the springs back. Again, any position we are. I engage it with that little power supply here that's a 12 volt. On the magnets only need about a half to a three quarter of an amp. So a little tiny power supply will do. Even so, I, later on, I'm going to integrate a different power supply on the bottom to drive the magnet and at the same time also have juice for the stepper motors. So, very simple. But we lift this up, it will chew in here. Just to demonstrate the magnet. Now I'm switching it on. You can see the power supply has a little green light here. And if I lift it now up, there's nothing going because this is really tight. Gonna lift it all up. You can see the green light here. I'm switching it off and the magnet releases. It's a little scratchy. That's because I haven't greased anything yet, but it works as intended. I'm very happy with it. Well, that's it for this year. I wish you all much cheer this holiday season and a happy new year. In the new year, I will continue to work on the Forster mod 
and on many new projects. Please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss them. Don't forget to check out my Discord channel and visit my website at ClashMeTwice.com for more info on this and other projects. And if you would like to support this channel, you can buy me a nice cup of coffee from the link below or on my website. Hope you all enjoyed this project video and I hope I earned a like from you. Crash Me Twice, out.